gathered here today to talk about medical education, which is a topic that we're extremely passionate about. When it comes to learning about medicine and health, there are some very interesting challenges. We heard some of them earlier today. These are challenges that I'm looking at from the perspective of a physician educator and a medical informatician. And I from the viewpoint of a 3D artist and a technology developer. So when I started medical school, we began with the anatomy course, and it's a fascinating experience. It centers on the delicate dissection of the human cadaver. It's a bit of a paradox because you're trying to learn about the dynamic and moving processes of life, of things that change over time, like disease or growth, but you're doing so through the stillness of death. Working with cadavers is a privilege, and they're a precious resource, one that you have access to for just the briefest amounts of time during your education. Think about what happens after you graduate from medical school. As you practice science for 40 years or more, the amount of knowledge in your field, the scientific foundations, will increase by an order of magnitude. There will be constantly new discoveries, new techniques. Some of what you've learned will turn out to be wrong and needs to be unlearned. How do we deal with that tidal wave? Our students at NYU still need to learn the foundations of human anatomy, but they now need to do so in this much broader context of health and disease. We were wondering how could we expand the classroom around the cadaver. But we couldn't do it using the normal set of skills at an academic medical center. We needed new collaborations, like the ones with John and his team. So when I came to NYU School of Medicine, seeing the educational challenges they were trying to overcome, I wanted to help. But to help, I had to first participate. So when the anatomy faculty, such as Dr. Sally Frankel, took me through my first cadaver dissection, I remember feeling the same sense of fascination with the process that Mark felt as a medical student. I loved it, it was great. It was very hands-on, an incredible way to learn, and a much different way to learn than I was used to in typical classroom environment. I never sought to replace this invaluable learning activity with a computer format, but to emulate it so you could practice it over and over again. Soon after, when the Department of Surgery commissioned our firm, BioDigital, to build surgical education modules, we were brought into the operating room and to observe procedures. Again, I was confronted by anatomy, but this time it was drastically different than what I was seeing in a cadaver lab. It was colorful, it was in motion. Uh, so as an animator and an educator, I wanted to merge these two experiences, the experience of dissection, with the experience that I had in the operating room and capture the excitement of these two memorable learning activities into a computer-based tool. John used the word excitement, and we think it's an exciting time to learn. We have amazing learning technologies at our fingertips. The entire world's knowledge is almost ubiquitously available. It's an exciting time to be a student, not just for those who are in classrooms, but for all of us as we learn new things and as we change the way we look at the world. Our concept of expertise, especially in medical education, is evolving. And it's becoming more about the skills of problem solving, of finding the best answer when a million answers are available, and of using computer-based tools to help us learn better and make better decisions. What we see as the magic on the near horizon is the emergence of a technology-enabled learning ecosystem, an interconnected set of tools and services that will surround us as learners from early childhood with us in the center and in control. These will grow with us and adapt with us, crossing the boundaries of schools, of jobs, of a career, of a lifetime of learning. These will be e-learning applications living in the cloud, created by schools, by government, by companies, by students themselves, by many of you. And at NYU School of Medicine, our students were already beginning to see the emergence of this ecosystem. We wanted to create a connection to it in the context of this anatomy course. We realized that we had to teach differently. We needed to teach to a new generation of learners. And we needed to teach the skills of lifelong learning so that they could keep using tools like this after they graduated. So when it came to teaching the anatomy course and teaching this new type of learner in the learning ecosystem, we wondered if there was any new technology that could help Mark and his team address some of their broader educational questions. Uh, we had the advantage of numerous advances in gaming technology, some of which you might have just seen, as well as web technology to build upon. 
This allowed us to put the educational and artistic aspects of what we were doing first and the technology second. HTML5, being one of those new web technologies, exposed native 3D graphics in the web browser. This meant we could finally port thousands of our 3D anatomy models directly into the web environment and manipulate them in real time. The result is what we call the biodigital human. It's a highly detailed 3D virtual body. It allows our learners to access and visualize the body in a way they never could before. So let us take you through it. So John's going to bring up the biodigital human here. We'll put it up on the big screen. And this is a highly detailed model of human anatomy created in conjunction with the computer graphics artists and our anatomy faculty. It has over 5,000 individual anatomic structures that are organized into groups of tissues and systems of organs, just like the way our medical students learn them in the class. The students can zoom in and out. They can control this from any angle and visualize it however they want. In addition, each piece of anatomy is labeled and mapped to a controlled vocabulary. This allows us to create a connection through the ecosystem to external knowledge sources. So here John is clicking on the left pectoralis major muscle, and we'll see here that we can link to things like patient education resources. So we're going to bring up uh, resources from the National Library of Medicine's Medline Plus system, which shows common conditions that would be associated with that piece of, uh, of anatomic structure, automatically and dynamically linked. Um, so within the platform, I have a range of tools for education and discovery. Right now, I'm using the dissection tool to dissect whatever I click on uh, goes away. We wanted to uh, capture the excitement of dissection in a computer format, as we mentioned. However, we knew we couldn't um, you know, replace the tactile feedback uh, very easily, but we, we thought to enhance dissection by allowing a student to then make their dissection, save it, and share it as a link, uh, which the web format can do for us. So we're one of, we wanted to foster a collaborative environment. You can also search the human body. So if I start typing in heart, for example, I can go to the heart valves, or I can go to the heart itself. And so notice the rest of the body becomes transparent. This is an amazing way for our students to learn. And uh, we can show things using this computer graphic engine in ways that are otherwise uh, completely impossible. So here John is showing us different systems of, of organs and tissues, and we're zooming around. And uh, we can even look at tissues in a different way using uh, some tools, like let's look at the slicer tool. So I'm going to pull up um, the heart. And here you can see what Mark is talking about is a cross-section tool that allows you to slice through and see the inside of the heart. So, so this is amazing, an amazing way for our <coughs> students to learn, and it's a core part of our anatomy course. Our medical students have a life-size biodigital human projected on the wall next to where they're doing their cadaveric dissections. They have an iPad at every cadaver station containing their e-textbooks, as well as the ability to control the biodigital human right from that, that iPad. We also wanted to show not just uh, normal anatomy, but disease. So now here's the same heart, and I'm loading um, a condition, atrial fibrillation. The heart is beating out of sync. Uh, it's subtle, but if I navigate to the atrium, you could see it's beating irregularly. So this is a dramatic change for us because we can show this dynamic content and processes here. And let's take it a step further. Let's say this patient had elevated cholesterol and they developed atherosclerosis of a coronary artery, which is a blockage of one of the blood vessels. We can zoom in down to the level of that blood vessel, almost at the cellular level, and see that yellow plaque, that cholesterol plaque. We can even get inside of the blood vessel for that sort of fantastic voyage view and allow our students to see how it affects blood flow as it's going through the vessel. And if atherosclerosis uh, persists, it could lead to a heart attack. And you can show outcomes as well. So here you're seeing the tissue becoming infarcted and dark and damaged. So here we've shown mostly at this point very sort of observatory kind of information and diseases. But we don't need to be limited by that. We can also show things like interactive surgical procedures to help our students understand complex concepts. So let's say that same patient with a heart condition um, had their appendix removed earlier in their life. 
here in this type of a platform, you can click and watch that procedure and see the steps of that procedure. So this is the biodigital human as an example of translational education. We took this from the computer gaming ed educational technology laboratory into our virtual classroom. And as a practicing internist, I'm very excited about this because it's a part of my ecosystem. I can look at this, I can relearn anatomy, I can learn about disease in a new way. My patients and I can look at this together. The ecosystem connects us, and we can learn about their disease or their procedures together as well. So what started as an anatomy project is more than just a virtual cadaver in our eyes. We view this as a, a way to visualize health information in general. Could this empower patients such as Mark's patients or their family members to learn about their disease by literally navigating to the effective part of the body? And would visualizing the outcome of their condition before it's too late encourage them to live a healthier life? Uh, our learners can dive deep, uh, they can explore, they can annotate, and create educational mashups that we wouldn't even have imagined. Um, you know, we hope to inspire high school learners, as well as the children's interest in a career in medicine and science, uh, as maybe this is the type of framework for cataloging and visualizing all living organisms. So our medical students at NYU love resources like this. This allows them to take a more active and controlled role in their learning. It frees them up to spend more time with real patients, because at the end of the day, nothing replaces real patients as a key part of our medical educational curriculum. But systems like this can prime the pump. And by creating connections between our students, our faculty, and this dynamic content, we're democratizing and decentralizing the education process. This tool, allows us to layer in some of that new science and some of that new context into our curriculum for the 21st century. And we, as a group of leaders here at TEDMED, have the opportunity before us to embrace ecosystem thinking and to create an opportunity for our students who inspire us every day to take control of these tools, to participate in the ecosystem, and to begin to transform both education and healthcare. So we have more medical conditions we'd like to build, as well as showing more surgeries and treatment options. Um, just imagine what else you can do with immersive digital technologies. There's so much happening in this space right now, and this was our contribution into the learning ecosystem. Thank you for letting us share with you.